My next guest is Priyanka Gill, founder and CEO of PopExo, which is India's largest digital community for women. An ambitious entrepreneur, she built the company into a highly tech-driven, data-driven, media tech platform. Uh, but let that not confuse you, it is also a, a massively consumer-centered, consumer-driven brand. Uh, the brand now drives over 200 million engagements every month and all from 300. women. 300. 300, as growing as we speak. Uh, in June 2017, Priyanka launched Plixo, India's uh, largest influencer marketing program. She's received several awards, including the FIKI Flowpar uh, to Empower Award in 2018 and the Young Business Women Award uh, at the CNBC Young Turks Conclave. Now you're at HT, congratulations. <laughs> Uh, I see you've chosen to speak to us today about uh, women-oriented e-commerce platforms. Is this the perfect moment or the perfect storm? I think uh, women have been a story that's been happening for a while and brands and marketeers um, have just been slow to understand what it's all about, right? If you look at uh, even traditional households, uh, decisions uh, while on paper might look, it's a male credit card that's being swiped, but women are often the influencers behind decisions that happen. I mean, the first rule and law of marketing, as all of you already know, is find the user where, he, where she is. And uh, millennial women are on their mobile phones, right? Magazines, uh, paper magazines, uh, all of us know what the readerships are on, are on those. So if you have to reach your female consumer, if you have to re you reach her on the mobile phone, you use mediums that speak to her in a way that she likes and understands, right? Uh, no woman today likes being spoken down to, no woman today likes being stereotyped, no woman today likes being told that she's less in any capacity. But a lot of the messages that we get from ads, etc., do exactly that. So if you're talking to the millennial woman today, you have to understand a way and speak her language in a way that she feels an affinity to your brand. Simple ways of doing that are, I mean, pink is, of course, a classic, right? It's easy, it's lazy, and you just turn something pink and you suddenly are female friendly. It's exactly not that. It's... Uh, in many ways, going deeper to understand who she is, what her motivation is, and why is, she, why is she going to be buying a financial product, and what motivates her to do that. All those things have to come out by understanding where the female consumer lies. And that's where a lot of the data that we look at uh, at PopExo comes true. In a month, we will create uh, 1,500 stories. We will create at least 100 videos every month. We put it out to the audience. We know exactly what they're consuming. Women ask and answer questions on our platform. We know what they're asking and answering in real time. All that data we, we pull together to understand what she is feeling and thinking at any given moment. That then informs the next batch of stories and the next batch of videos that we create. And that gives us a broad trends in what she's interested in. If a company like PopExo, which is just about coming to like five years this March, if we can do it at scale, where we are reaching 39 million women across platforms every month, I have a whole bunch of legacy brands and big brands with big budgets sitting in the room right now. They should definitely be able to do the same thing. This whole thing of women creating brands for women, and I know that uh, your company is 68% women, mostly millennial women, and your leadership is 60% women. How much of that reflects in the brand? So, you know, till we were 50 people in the company, we were 100% women. And then uh, we added tech, e-commerce, a whole. Now we have 170 people in the company, and uh, the sex ratio has changed a little bit more. But uh, because the DNA of the company is uh, female, it's a bunch of women who've kind of built the company, who started the company, the way that we run, the way that we think, uh, that discounting that everyone just almost automatically and unconsciously does, even though they don't want to, that doesn't happen in PopExo. And the uh, the team of people creating the content, the team of people distributing the content are actually the users as well. So there's a deep connect with uh, the people that we are trying to, with the women that we are trying to reach. And that hugely helps. I mean, I, at the risk of uh, sounding awful, but I don't think a man could have built a company like PopExo. It takes kind of a team of women to I do that. But I do have another question for you, which is uh, we often accuse the men 
for stereotyping women, particularly in marketing and ads. Uh, but do sometimes women also stereotype women and is that something to be cautious about? I think all of us can do it at any given point in time, right? And uh, especially in today's day and age, staying aware, staying conscious and staying very aware of everything that we are saying and doing is important. And it's not to say that, oh my God, like, you know, women are in the room, so let's just leave. It's not to say that. But uh, Ritu kept saying that you guys are, are supposed to reflect what's happening in the real world. But I also worry that every single time an ad plays in which a woman is being shown anything less, you're also telling uh, the young girl watching that ad, this is what reality is, right? So that has to change because it's a self kind of perpetuating circle at this point. Uh, marketers believe, predominantly male marketers believe that women are a certain way, so that's what they portray. The young women who are watching it then get told that reality is like this. So then you have to kind of squeeze yourself in a corner. So, I mean, you guys are kind of the perfect audience that can actually put a stop to what I think is a complete travesty. And don't do it for any uh, 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 empowerment reasons. Do it for the bottom line, because that is where you will begin to see a positive impact. Uh, thank you very much. Thank that you. was fantastic. And I think uh, wonderful to go from the need for communities to real communities and communities that are profitable and the ability to actually build not just a successful brand, but a successful business uh, around women as customers. And I think the, the lessons are telling. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.